Hi, I'm Vanessa Joy, wedding and portrait photographer in the New York and New Jersey area. I wanna to talk to you about these different types of reflectors, what they're used for, so you can figure out what you should be bringing on your next shoot. If you want to learn more about photography, please hit subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications. I have a lot of photography videos here, lots of new gear talk, and I think you'll like it. Today we're talking about all the different types of reflectors that I could think of here, all by Lastolite, and you need to know this. Reflectors are probably the biggest tools for a photographer and potentially the least expensive but the biggest advancement to your craft. So the first thing I wanna talk about is this little baby right here. Now this is called the Halo Reflector and I'm not taking it out quite yet because it is, uh, this is the point of it. This is the point of it right here. Most reflectors, like the rest of them that you see here, like this round one right here, fold up and they are compact but they're a little bit larger at least compared to this now if you're a travel photographer if you have to go on hikes if you have to get on an airplane you know that reflectors shaped like this and even ones that are a little bit smaller are simply a pain in the butt so this is your best friend if you're a travel photographer or a professional photographer that is working solo without an assistant and you'll see why let me open this baby and you'll see the magic all right so it pretty easily just hinges and push it together like that and it comes with a variety of different skins this is one we'll be using today where it has silver and white but it has other ones Oh, it's right here. All right, so here's another skin that they have that has the silver and white, and on the other side, the gold and silver. Ooh, maybe we'll use the gold and silver. Let's give that a try. Now, the first two, you wanna make sure that you are putting on either side of the handle, and while I'm putting these on, and yes, this takes a little bit of time to do because this is not your open pop-up fast reflector that you're gonna open really quickly and close really quickly on jobs. That reflector use we will get to later. But this one is about being compact, being able to travel, literally being able to put it in your back pocket. But the other thing that's nice about this is this right here. You can attach this right to the top of a light stand. So if while you're traveling, you're working solo, or while you're traveling, you want to uh, photograph yourself, and you certainly can, that's a wasp. <laughs> or while you're traveling, you want to photograph yourself and need to block some light or hold a reflector. Or swat a wasp. Or swat a wasp. <laughs> uh, this is gonna work out really nicely for you. The other great thing about this reflector is you can literally bounce a coin off of it. You are gonna get some perfectly directional light off of this baby. We should have brought like a Barbie to <laughs> jump on this. All right, and it's really light, so you can hand hold it and shoot. You can put it on to uh, a stand, which I have right over here. This is the Manfrotto. A carbon nanopole stand. It goes up to 12 feet, I believe. Might have to correct me on that. All right, so if you are hooking the reflector up into here, be careful, this is a wind sail and you need to weigh this down. So right away, I'm gonna make sure that this is at its max capable stand, which is right around there, so it's nice and flat. And then I'm gonna weigh this down as well. All right. Let's get to shooting. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do with this is give her a little bit of hair light. I can get a pretty good shot where we're not needing to fill her face. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the gold side as a nice rim light for her. Nice. This shoulder, try to just bring it back as much as possible because, yep, <laughs> perfect. And look a little that way, nice. And then we definitely need another reflector here. So. All right, so honestly right now, I could use another reflector, but that's perfect. Now I can introduce you to the second reflector on my list here, the Tri-Grip. Now this is your, if you're working solo and you have to hold your own reflector, this is your friend. Not only is it nice and tight, but it has an eight in one, so you can get all types of different skins. There's a diffuser in here, and you, which actually I'm gonna use the diffuser, I think. So let's go ahead and take this off.
There we go. So now I've got a diffuser, which I'm gonna to use to block some of the spotty light that's hitting Juliana. Has a nice hand grip, so I can go just like that and really keep it stable and on my hand. So now, not only can I give Juliana a little bit of shade, but the, and here's the trick with this. When you are using a, a blocker, a diffuser, you don't just wanna put it up. You wanna get it as close as you can to her and up and tilt down so that when the light is coming in, it's almost like clamshelling for her. Nice. Really thankful for the R Perfect focusing and IBIS while my hand shakes holding this. <laughs> Let's try this. Nice. Come chin down a little bit more. Actually, let's just use all the features I have all at one time. My arm. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's in-body stabilization, which is helping me out. So it helps with the camera shake that I'm creating right now. And we can shoot high. Nice. Nice. Yeah, these all look awesome. All right, cool. So those are the first two reflectors. Now the next ones probably come with needing an assistant of some kind. Ooh. I should do a whole video on just how to fold these babies. You should. <laughs> Just so you know, all of the pictures you will be seeing throughout this video are straight out of camera using the standard profile conversion to JPEG. So I thought I would edit one of my favorite photos here for you. I'll pull it into Lightroom from Photo Mechanic and go over my basic preset settings. The typical one that I use is Joyfully Simple, which just adds a little bit of pop, softens the skin, and adds vibrance. From there, I'll go over to my local adjustment brushes and using my presets for retouching essentially in Photoshop, I'll go over softening the skin, saturating the eyes, whitening the whites of the eyes and punching lashes. I don't like to do a whole lot of it, especially in Lightroom because it is very basic retouching, but man, it is fast. And it's exactly what I need to give the photos a little extra pop and clean up the skin. Take a look at this before and after. Of course, editing is subjective, so you might like yours to be a little bit more or a little bit less than what I've done, but I think for about a minute and a half in Lightroom, this is pretty darn good. All right, back to these reflectors. This next one is called the Bottle Top, and this is great for being compact, easy open. It's a 48 inch, which is nice for individuals or couples. I shoot a lot of weddings, so I'm always interested in reflectors and light modifiers that I can use with couples. And the tri-light is great, the halo is great, but when you have a bigger option here, you know, I can use this diffuser for, you know, a couple or even three people together, as opposed to I'd have a little bit hard of a time with a smaller reflector. Now, much like all of the other reflectors you've seen, this of course comes with your variety of skins as well. So you've got your, you know, gold silver, you've got your silver side, you've got your gold, and you've got your white. What do we wanna use? Well, the light just went away, but I think it's gonna come out again. So I think I wanna stick, hmm, let's do a nice soft light here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on the white. And it's just elastic, it just goes around. I bet you someone out there on YouTube can tell me a better and faster way to do this. And I'm really excited for all of you to tell me. <laughs> hey, it wasn't until I was using one of those umbrellas, you know, with a diffuser on it. It's like three years later, somebody told me the easier way to put that on there. So you can always learn new things, but that wasn't that hard. All right. And of course you can fold it up with, with that attached. So I would probably have on here like the two sides that I use the most, which would be um, gold and silver and and the white all right so with this you definitely are going to need an assistant to help you because uh, this is not really fitting on a stand so much so Charles can I steal you <laughs> Thanks. all right I actually really want to shoot with my 135 uh, you know that's the other advantage uh, having someone who can hold the reflector is you don't have to be uh, concerned about being close enough to work the reflector yourself so we're gonna put on that 135. This is an EF lens, but I've got uh, my Canon control ring mount adapter EF EOS R. Um, so come down a little bit if you can. I know it's kind of dirt. We don't see your hands or your feet, so you're good. Nice. 
That looks awesome. And I want to get a little higher, so I'll just test out the uh, in-body stabilization and focusing of the R5 yet again. And let's go all the way down to 2.0. I can't really see. There we go. Nice. I'm holding this, hand holding this 200th of a second with a 135 on. Let's give it a little bit of a break. I'm gonna go 200 so I can hold maybe at 500 on my shutter. A little bit lower. Nice. You saw yourself. <laughs> Awesome. Perfect. Turn towards me a little bit with your body. Yeah. That looks great. Nice. Cool. Let's go in one more spot with this where there's actual sun. So if, if you guys come over here, then I'll be able to get a little bit of flare and some actual dramatic light. All right. Now, when you're holding a reflector, you want to make sure that you're not holding it below her. Charles, can you hold it below her? Because when you do this, it looks like she's telling scary ghost stories and the light is coming up from below her. And I'm so sorry for this picture just right off the bat. All right. That's not an attractive light pattern. So what you want to do instead, go ahead, Charles, and hold it up beside her. If you get the reflector as vertical as you can, now the light is coming from the side and it's just a much more attractive uh, light pattern on her face. Nice. All right, good. Hide in the shade. Quick, hide in the shade. <laughs> All right, so as you guys have probably noticed, I've been taking head and shoulder shots of Juliana. And the reason being, well, if I have a smaller reflector, I'm not necessarily going to be able to cover her whole body. So that's where our last reflector comes in. And I guess you might have another name for it than a reflector, but it's still nice and compact and you can assemble it fairly easy. But what this one, the skylight, is going to do is it's going to allow me to create a full body scrim cover reflector diffuser whatever you want to call it and it's great for when you're shooting groups weddings and you just can't hide from the sun which we're gonna go stand in the sun and show you what we mean so before we jump into this make sure that you download my free posing inspiration guide we could all use some inspiration get that in the link below with lots of ideas on how to pose groups and individuals we have the skylight. Now you could hook this up to a light stand, of course, uh, but like I mentioned with the halo, even that little thing just becomes a windscreen. So it might be better to have someone holding this. I definitely appreciate that nice little case. So like everything else of theirs, you've got a lot of different skins here. We've got a translucent diffuser, and then we've got our combo gold silver. And on the other side, it's like a nice shiny white, which is really nice. I think we'll just, you know what? What do we want to use? Let's go for this gold silver, but we'll use it on her face, I think. Yeah, let's do that. That'll just create for some fun. All right, so I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, this is complicated. I promise it's not. Everything is already connected. Let me turn that off. And you just start opening it and you can see the pieces to start coming together. Now it is big, but it compacts, which is ideal. Would I bring this on a wedding? Yes, would I use it for absolutely every shot? No, but once you have it open, and if you are stuck shooting in you know, noonday sun, and you've got groups to shoot, and you know bridal portraits and couple shots, this could just save your butt. Now these little snaps you're probably familiar with already. Looks just like the halos. All right, so again, it does take a second to set up, but it's just gonna save your life. Some of these, some of these shoots that you have to do, some of these weddings, and it gives you a level of control that quite frankly, most photographers don't even bother having. So it will absolutely set you apart. Now I don't recommend letting your clients sit here and watch you put this together either put it together before they come or have an assistant do it while you are off shooting uh, and doing something else with the clients so that's it you can bounce a quarter off that too
All right, so the first thing we're going to do is show you the wrath of exactly how bright this thing can be in direct sun, and then we'll use it for more practical matters. All right. <laughs> quick, quick go. Do like a more kind of powerful stance and look this way. Yep, not at it. <laughs> yep, uh, go ahead. <laughs> Perfect, okay, stop. <laughs> so you pretty much essentially can harness the power of the sun in that thing. Uh, but for the sake of who we're photographing, uh, let's use it a little bit more practically. So now we have it being used more as a reflector. It's very, very subtle, but it's definitely popping a little bit of light into Juliana's eyes. Looks good. I'm gonna scooch in. Nice. Do a couple kind of leaning back on here. Good. Nice. Good. Hang there for a second. Perfect. Cool. All right, so those are the four different kinds of reflectors. And as you can see, they have a ton of different uses. So you've got the halo reflector, which is great for solo shooting, travel, professional shooting, when you just need something light and super compact. Then you have the tri-grip, which is great for, again, solo shooting, be able to hand hold it really fast, open and close, great for events and portraits. You've got the bottle top, which is larger, better for two or three people being able to diffuse and the collapsible bottle top that classic reflector with a large range of sizes and fabrics. It's a five in one for different skins. And of course it's that perfect circle, always gives a really nice catch light in the eyes. And then finally the skylight, which is definitely a step up, but it's wonderful for covering a larger area, groups of people, full length light, everything, all of that. It's also great for video content where subjects might need to move around or e-commerce shoots where you want to get a single setup where you can move a lot of different sizes and move through things fast. Really great for product shots, you know, covering a large area, being able to light a large area and move things in and out if you're shooting things like products. So as you can tell, there are a lot of different reflectors and they all have different uses just depending on your needs. So take a look, think about what you need, head to the links in the description below and pick up what's going to work best for you. I'm Vanessa Joy. Make sure you hit like, subscribe. See you next time.